So today I thought it'd be fun if we took another deep dive into Reddit and checked out some problems that only Europeans get have things stuff title to be refined. What things are basically uniquely European problems that you don't have in America and Australia? I'm gonna stop using my hands so much. Before we get into the video, please, please subscribe, please, uh, or else uh, I'll be sad. Oh, Chewy will also be sad, will be sad. Chewy, 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 do your sad face. He's doing it, you just can't see it behind the cup. Okay, the first problem that we have here is different Netflix content when you change country. That is so true. I wanna watch my show! You would think in all of Europe we might have the same one because if you're just taking a little trip across the pond, say to London for a day or something, you'd think we'd have the same Netflix, but we really don't. I've gotta say, I think Ireland has better Netflix than the UK. Of course, you can call me biased. I don't know, maybe we have better buying video deals. And I know you guys keep saying get a VPN, but honestly, I'm just waiting for one of those VPN companies to come and sponsor me. I actually did get an offer from a VPN company, but I checked them out and I didn't like it, so. Today's video is sponsored by me. On the flip side, something that can be quite annoying is when I'm watching something on British television and I go to watch it on my iPad, say like a channel app, sometimes they won't let me access it here in Ireland. And I'm like, why? It's pretty annoying. The next thing somebody says is a uniquely European problem is small roads. They said, don't know if this is just England, it's not. But my street can only fit one car and a skinny person and the main road outside it can barely squeeze a bus and a big van. Okay, this is a huge part of my fear of driving. A lot of Irish roads are not good. And the time I did try driving in the past, you'd be driving along a road, it'd be so narrow and then a car would come up and it's like you need to know how to reverse and go back and let the person and you could be reversing miles like i'm just it's just ugh, it's very stressful the whole driving thing maybe i'll get around to it when i'm like 60. driving is stressful driving is a stressful experience next up we have not getting any cool stamps in the passport when traveling around europe again this is accurate you can ask if they'll stamp your passport, but they kind of look at you a bit like, bless. In America or Australia, they definitely stamp your passport all the time and it's cool because then you can look through your thing and you're like, I've been here. But according to my passport, I've been pretty much nowhere. Nowhere. I don't know why they don't do the stamps in European passports, they just don't really. I got them to stamp Chewie's passport before and a few people that asked, yes, dogs need passports to fly around to different countries. He has a head. It's well, you can see it a bit more now. So his passport has stamps whilst mine doesn't really have any stamps at all. The next thing somebody says is having to Google does X take the euro, oh my God, every time. If the country doesn't, then you're coming home with lots of fiddling small change that the banks won't deal with. Accurate. So in Europe, not everybody uses the euro, which is extremely annoying. I gotta say it is handy that a lot of places do use the euro, but there's a lot of places that don't. And there's no pattern of understanding which countries don't use it, just some just don't. And you can bet your bottom dollar, but um bum Smiley. That they're gonna give you little change. I have like four different wallets with just different currencies of coin in them because there's no point in trying to bring them to a bank to exchange them and if I ever go there again, I might want the coins. Oh, it's just a little irritation. It's not the end of the world. Frustrating nonetheless. That it's cheaper to take a two week holiday to Mallorca than a 10 day nature trip to center parks. Okay, center parks I think is a, I think it's an English thing. I can totally relate though. We have parks like that. They're like all inclusive things where you can bring your whole family and stuff. And yes, it's very accurate, especially in Ireland. Ireland is one of the most expensive countries to live in the entire world. And so if you choose to holiday in Ireland, it's not necessarily your cheapest option. There are times when I've gone, oh, I'd love a weekend break and maybe I'll pop down to Cork or something, stay in a hotel with a nice swimming pool, sneak the dog in. Oh, a puppy. Ah, bark, 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 bark. And then I find out I could go to Italy for the weekend for cheaper, flights and hotel included. And then I just get frustrated and don't go anywhere and just stay in my apartment as I do my whole entire life. My whole entire life. I'm never leaving. But yeah, it's bizarre. You'd think that like you could stay in the same country for cheaper, but 
No, not necessarily. The next person says, how many cheek kisses do I do here? In France, it's two. In the Netherlands, it's three. Are there more kisses in other places? How many kisses are acceptable in formal situations? Can we just shake hands awkwardly like in the UK? Yeah, I've definitely found this as Ireland has become more cosmopolitan. If you're doing the cheek kissy thing, which you really shouldn't be right now, there is a pandemic going on globally. But in past days when you used to do it, not this. That's the new greeting now, but you touch elbows, it's so weird. I do the two kissy thing, which I find weird enough in itself, and then somebody going for a third and you're like, ugh, and then you end up with this weird lingering, oh, face to face moment and it's It's just a hell of a lot of awkwardness. In Ireland, I found hugging to be the most common thing that people do, but then it can be extremely superficial, a hug. You know, I just don't, why are we, why are we doing this? Ugh. Greetings are hard. The next thing is quite simply paying for public toilets. And I've seen a few people in comments mention this too. Yeah, in Europe, you have to pay to use a public toilet. Uh, in most places I found in France and Italy, but in Ireland, there actually aren't many public toilets at all, which is even more awkward. Usually you'll have to pop into an establishment, which you're not really supposed to do, but what's the alternative? We just got a brand new toilet built in the city center, which I'm super excited to try, which, I realize now as I'm saying it sounds weird. On the flip side, I have a list of very good places to use the bathroom in Dublin city center, which is not something that you would think you would need, but yeah, useless things you know. The next one is having to decide how to vote in the Eurovision. A lot of countries come in and they enter a song and then at the end of the night, uh, one country's song is picked as the best song in Europe, but not Europe because other countries enter now too confusing. But back in there, we used to have a panel from each country. So you'd have a panel of experts, you know, people in songwriting and stuff to say whether it was the best song or not. And a little bit of politics would creep in here and there. England and Ireland always had this weird voting thing where England would vote for us, which was kind of a sorry about all of that stuff. And in turn, Ireland would go, feck off, you're not getting any of our points. Everybody was okay with it. But more recently, they made it so that people can text and phone to vote, like anybody in the public. And now it's just become an absolute, I can't think of a better word. It's become a shit show. Because obviously people who immigrate into different countries vote for their own country and it just, it's not about the best song anymore and some of the cracks been taken out of it, so. Ireland actually used to win a lot. I think we're the most wins ever. And then we won six times in a row and then we couldn't actually afford to host it anymore, so. We entered kind of a crap song. That's just what happened. It's actually quite expensive to host the Eurovision. Like good for tourism, but expensive. The next one says waking up to some American news or trends that you see all over the internet, like that Super Bowl, that's not popular here. Oh, that's Super Bowl. Yeah, it's funny when something is trending in America and there's almost like a couple of hours in the day where you kind of see, does it come over here? Do other people know about this? And vice versa, if something big happens in Ireland, you're kind of wondering, is that gonna make international news or is that just us? Is this internationally important? It doesn't all make its way over here and all of our stuff does not make its way all out of here. But it's interesting to see what things catch on in Europe and in other continents, indeed, around the world. She's crazy! And the number one thing is buying soundtracks and TV shows online that were shown and released in your country, but are now only available for purchase outside of Europe. Oh my God, yes this. So this happens a lot. Something will be released overseas and then you find it has not been released in Ireland at all. And it's so annoying. And again, yes, we have all kinds of ways to hack the system. Okay, I've hacked into the mainframe. It's just, why are you showing me this if I can't have it? A good example is Amazon. In Ireland, most of us use amazon.co.uk as opposed to amazon.com. But say I put into the search engine transportable alarm. All the transportable alarms available in the UK come up and I go through a tedious process of searching for the right one. Oh, this one's really good. You can use this. Uh, without Wi-Fi, blah, 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 blah. You know yourself, you're searching for something in a shopping thing and it takes time. And then I go to check out and it says, does not deliver to Ireland. Why are you showing me it then? Now there are ways around this. You can use a parcel motel with an English address, but then you have to pay extra. I'm just like, why did you bother showing me this if I can't? Have it. Oh, it's a golden goose. Anyway, that's it for today. Let me know below in comments what you find to be a uniquely your place that you live problem. And I'll see you on the other side. Bye. Having to Google. Oh, the side. Bye. Do you want to come be in the video? You didn't even. You're just ready to go as soon as I say bye. You're ready to be in the video. Come on.
This is your teddy, I bought you a new one. Do you just want to play with this one? Now people think I'm talking to myself because you're on the floor stretching. Ooh, big stretch. If I don't say big stretch when you do a stretch, did you even stretch at all? Ooh, that's at the end.